There's a lot of rumors surrounding this. What happened with Paul Pierce, man? Because because a, a, a lot of us a, a lot of us hear this story about Brandy. <laughs> and yeah. You was talking to Brandy and he was. You said no, this was false. No, no, like man, that was Brandy was like I. Now I can tell you a story. Where, I remember Brandy at the Hit Factory in Miami, right? And I'm hopefully she'll see this. So we gave Ray J his first really debut on TV on, for the Source Sound Lab. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, I remember was, that he was hosting on UPN. Yeah, yes. I remember that. I remember All right. So you know, we knew Ray. You know what I'm saying? Brandy was in Miami, and I think this was the time she was just talking to the, I think who was now the father of a child, the, the producer guy she mm -hmm. was working with. Rodney. Rodney. Rodney was there. So me and I forgot what happened, but we was up there deep, just us. And I think. I got into it with one of the guys. But you know, like we love each other, but we going into it, yeah, we going yeah, hard. Yeah. And I just remember Brandy and them like running out the studio and shit, and you know what I'm saying? She's like, what the fuck, you know what I mean? That's just, so I never knew Brandy like that, so I didn't even hear that rumor. Mm -hmm. What happened was, Paul got aggressive with, 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 with one of the guys, one of my guys, girl. Got aggressive, he got aggressive. When athletes come to Boston, it's not the first time it happened. Like Mo Vaughn, you remember Mo Vaughn? Mo, oh, yeah. Mo Vaughn was the big first baseman mm -hmm. for the mm. Red Sox. So Mo Vaughn is hollering at Apple's girl, my man Apple, Apple Street nigga. Mo Vaughn catches a fucking glass ashtray to the face at the Roxy nightclub. Mm. Lawyer Malloy. Oh. Lawyer Malloy's fucking with one of my guy's baby mothers. My man Merrill. Jumps in the motherfucking uh, limousine where lawyers are at the club and pulls out a four fifth on. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like you, you, you see the pattern? Yeah. A lot of these young guys got to realize when you go in, in, in these in, in these cities and you fucking all these broads, you gotta be cognizant. You gotta know who you're messing with because these chicks, if their baby's daddy is in the hood and he ain't got too much, that's all they got. Yeah. The last thing they want to hear about their baby mother, whether he's with them or not, and if he's with them, it's worse, mm -hmm. is fucking on a basketball player or a football player. Well, let me rephrase that. If he's not, but still, it's not worth it. You know, these young guys playing sports, man, they just go crazy and they just disregard like a motherfucker will find you, a motherfucker will run up on you about their broad. Mm -hmm. Word. Paul was too aggressive with the girl. I don't know if he grabbed her ass. I don't know what happened. I think, I think my man, you know, free shout to you know, big boss, Frout Roscoe. But I, but he but he but he warned him one time, like, bro, chill, and he and he didn't chill, and we in Boston, and, and in Boston, that's how it happens. I don't know, you know, when one fight, it, the motherfuckers is jumping out, the, niggas is jumping out of paintings, out of clocks, out of front <laughs> of, hey, motherfuckers is coming up from the he fucking jumped out of panels on the, on the floor, <laughs> like, and and you know. The thing about it was, I'm standing feet away watching, and I didn't know it was Paul. Mm. And I don't got to say this to, to, to lie or to oppress. If I knew that was Paul, I would have ran over there and stopped that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just being a big Celtics fan, but I knew the ramifications if that was Paul. I seen it, and I just didn't know who the fuck it was. I knew the nigga was tall. I just didn't know. I watched him. He was at Kansas. It just didn't look the same. We in a dark-ass nightclub. The thing about that night is that Paul... I bounced to New York soon. I got on the flight and got the fuck out of there because the word was it was Made Man and Benzino. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, hell no. That was on the news and everything. I said, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I didn't do it. I'm walking to get my car when everything's haywire and Tony Bettine, his brother, is mentioning my name. I could have said something right to Tony right there. He was the center. You mm -hmm. told Tony Bettine, yeah. Tony. Yeah, he said, yeah. That he, he was like, yeah, it was Made Man. It was Benzino. I'm right next to this nigga. Oh, my mother. And <laughs> so... My man Hearst, he picked him out the lineup, didn't pick me. He's in the hospital and they're telling him to pick me. I'm thinking they thinking he's gonna die and they're saying, they're pointing at my picture out the book. They're like, him. He didn't pick me, but he picked my guys. And one of the guys he picked was standing there with me watching. So I had mm. to spend about 100, 150,000 on a lawyer for Hearst. And we took the trial, Hearst could have went to jail for that. And he wasn't even over there. Mm. Other niggas over there, but Hurst was. Mm. And, um, you know, Paul took the stand. 
like Paul pointed niggas out. You know, you know I, I don't know, you know, but he took the stand, pointed niggas out, and um, yeah, you know, niggas got twenty years over that shit. Damn. I didn't know all that. Yeah. Damn. Me and Paul seen each other a couple of times at the Miami <laughs> Heat game, and you know what I'm saying? We seen each other, but you know, look, look, you know what I'm saying? Shit happens, you know what I'm saying? And like, I was a little disappointed with Paul because I'm, I'm a fan of Paul Pierce and Celtics. Mm -hmm. But when that happened, it's like, God, you know what I'm saying? It's like, what the fuck? And it's like, when he went on Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes, mm -hmm. the way he told the story was a little irresponsible. And I just think that he could, like, you gotta, like, we gotta try to be bigger men to show these young, youngsters out here something different. You gotta like kind of man up and really show what happened and say, look, I was wrong. How do you and tell the story? Just nonchalantly, like it just, you gotta watch it. You know what okay. I'm saying? I just, well, I, I watched it and I just, you know what I'm saying? I just was like, his answers wasn't right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? But you know, I can't, he's his own man. And at the end of the day, I mean, he got poked up bad. Paul yeah. almost died, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It was And for him to come back and do what he did was fucking like, Avengers shit, like you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying. That nigga took almost almost went to the championship with all those wounds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they love Paul Pierce in Boston. And I get it. That you could be a black man and be loved by all the whites up there, but then be a black man and be hated by them same whites. Mm -hmm. It's just the paradox of Boston. How did that? How did Obenzino had something to do with it? How did that affect your career? I mean, I think like, I think you know, for the most part. At the source, couldn't nothing affect my career, because the money was just coming in so much. I had I was I was on a major label, I was getting five seven hundred thousand dollar deals. Mm. Man, I was doing a lot of shit, um, had a lot of money, and um, so it, it, you know I was always in controversy, and that's almost like that's what we was known for. Back then, being in controversy actually helped your career. Mm. With with me. The, the the career thing was probably the M, the Eminem thing because just the magnitudes of his fan base and how they're just over the top with it and disrespectful. Like we, we, our fan base ain't like that. Mm -hmm. Like when like hip hop, us, our culture, we're not like that. And so, you know, and when I say that, it's not like it hurt my career because I I, I can't say my music was always overshadowed after after all this. So, you know, but I, you know I mean? I'm a man and I, and I gotta take responsibility for that. You know, all them situations that happened, I was in regardless, regardless. And I, you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta, I had to, you gotta do better, man. You gotta, you know, you can't, you know, after you get mature and you, and, and you live a little longer and you start having kids, you can't, you can't want to live like that no more. And you gotta see what you did wrong and change you too can't always be blaming somebody. The problem mm -hmm. with our culture now is that we always point a finger, we run from blame, we don't take responsibility. Everybody that takes responsibility, they feel like they're being embarrassed and they lash out. Um, I've, I've passed all that. Like, diss records don't really hurt me. I've been around too much death and destruction, real, for like words to like, that's right. even like how nail in the coffin, like, I, I didn't hear it the same way because all that shit that he's talking, a drug dealer, I really sell drugs. I really do all that. Like, mm -hmm. all that shit you're talking, that yabba dabba do shit. That's, <laughs> I don't get into that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it didn't affect me like how people thought it did because I, I, it's like the shit that I've been through is like, man, this is nothing. 